Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner. So in this episode, we actually create a death screen. So right there, as you can tell, we got a nice fade to black. We've got this menu showing and also a play button for play again if you wish. And also a two menu button, which returns us to the menu that does not work just yet. But we're going to make it work in the next episode. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we need is actually a menu. So um, you see how we have our canvas over here and we have the score container as well. Now what we'd like to do is actually add another type of container. So we're going to add a def menu container. The way we're going to do this is by right clicking on canvas and let's start by adding a image again. Now um, I'm going to be using this image for animation purpose. I want to do a fade to black basically. So all I have to do in this case is uh, first let's rename that picture for def menu and def menu is going to be a image that stretch both horizontal and vertical. I'm going to put all the values on zero so it fills the whole thing and I'll also change the color for a black. Okay. So I've got my den menu, now I gotta do an animation on that later on, that's fine. And on top of that, we're gonna be displaying the score and also adding two buttons for the play and the um, back to menu. So I will go right click on this object, UI, and I'll add a, doo -doo -doo, a image. Actually, you know what, let's just copy over the score container we add. Let's paste it inside of the def menu like so, and I'm going to rename this and score. Now this is going to be a fairly, uh, a slightly different. So I'm going to be putting this in the center, anchor it in the center, like so. Modify the width for say 500 by a hundred, 125, and my score is going to be displayed right there. So this is now um, and score as well. So let me just off that a little bit so the score might be like what 56 36 that's going to be your score right there in the middle of the screen um, this big now again we're still in the def menu I'm going to right click here add a say a button so we add a button this time and I'll just be putting it right about there now inside of that button I'll be changing the text for play and uh, also change the font while I'm at it, why not? And um, I could be using, I have some custom buttons right here that comes in with my pack. I could be using these, but I think I'll actually end up using the uh, normal one, the one that Unity gives me. So background, why not? Okay, so maybe just um, scale it up a little bit, make sure the height is like 50 and width 200. Also scale up the size of that button, I mean the size of that text. So plays about there, and this is going to be, make sure you rename this for play button. Now we're also going to make another one, so duplicate this, control C on the keyboard, control V. This is going to be the menu button, and we just move it down a little bit like this. Change the text inside of it for menu. Okay, so now what? whenever we hit play, this is what we're going to see. Our game is running in the background, but we, we can't see this because, well, first, this def menu is there. It's active. And what I'd like to do is actually, when I die, I simply toggle on and off that menu, like I'm doing right now, but we do it via code. So, um... The way we're going to do this is we are going to add a new script to that very def menu. So choose your def menu, go on add component and I'm going to type in def menu create a new C sharp script. Like we always do I'm going to drag and drop this inside of the script folder to keep, uh, to keep my project clean and then after that let's double click on def menu to open it up inside of Unity. Okay so like always we've got this clean page. First thing we need to do whenever the game starts, let's make sure that this game menu is turned off. So game object dot set active false. So whenever we boot the game now, we hit play, 
this will automatically turn off himself. Okay. Now, um, we also need a function that will be calling from outside because remember, this is this is usually the menu that happens when uh, we die, and we don't exactly know when we're gonna when we're gonna die on this script. We need to be told when this happens. So let's go down here and say public void toggle and score or end menu if you prefer. And let's actually send in the score value as well. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go from uh, the score script, this one, the score.cs, and we're going to be calling this function and we're going to be sending the score as well so we can modify it from our own score text. Okay. So um, we saw how to do it with get component. Okay, so we saw how to actually um, call the function using the get component dot set speeds. Let's, let's actually use another approach this time. Um, we could be using the send message, but what I feel like doing is we are going to declare up here. You see how we declare a public score text over here. Let's make a public def menu actually. So our very own def menu that we've made, our very own component, we're going to make it public and actually drag and drop it inside the inspector. I'm in the uh, scroll.cs here, by the way, and I'm going to go all the way down to the undef function, type in def menu dot toggle and menu just like this. Now this requires me to go on the score. So player score. Oh, I have a um, an error. I need to send in a float value. So send in the score value. And when this compiles, I should have a new public field right here, the def menu field. So in order to assign um, this field, I need to find an object that has the def menu component. Now, on my canvas, I have an object that has the def menu. It's right here. That's the component. So back on player, I will drag and drop my def menu inside of here. Again, we now know that def menu is equal to this component and from this component I am calling the function called toggle and menu so what exactly do we need to do now we need to say game object that set active to true like this let's try it out so hitting play on the keyboard and I should be able to have my def menu pop whenever I die like this now, of course, the score is pretty much false, so we need to fix that right about now. Lucky for us, we get the score as a parameter, so now all we gotta do is actually point toward the the, um, the score text, the end score text. We're gonna do the same exact thing, so we're gonna go up here and say unity engine.ui, and we are going to get private, actually, let's make, let's make it public so we can simply drag and drop public text, score text. And we're going to say score text dot text is equal to, and then we cast to an int again, so int score dot to string. Now let's make sure that score text is actually something. So if we go in the def menu, we drag and drop score text in there, like so. So we use this one. Now we could have done a get component in children because we're starting from def menu. We could have done a def uh, a um, get component in children of type text, and it would have gotten us this one, this first occurrence. But if you had this the other way around, if you had this uh, in a different order, so say play button would be first, then you would actually get the text of the play button, and you'd be modifying that, so the score would have been written here. So you got to be careful about this. Um, just know. Just know in which order your menu is if you're going to use the get component. Or else you could get all the components. So uh, get component with an S in children's. And then it returns you an array of text. But we took the easy way out. So we basically just drag and drop the good field in there. Let me just change that for this. Doesn't really matter. We're never going to see it. But it just helps me uh, figure out things. Okay. So we should have the text written in the middle of our screen now, as you can tell, 4. 
and we got a good start now of course our buttons they don't work the play and the menu button they don't work so we are going to create a new function for those let's type in public again let's make sure that they are public um, public void play again or restart why not so restart like this and then we're gonna write another one just below this public void and uh, which one was this? This was the two menu. So we're going back to the menu scene, which we don't have uh, right now, but we'll have in a moment. Okay, so in both case, we're going to be doing the same exact thing. Let me just go up here in my using statement. We're going to say using Unity Engine dot Scene Management. Whoops, Scene Management. And uh, we're using this so we can use some uh, manager right here. So we're going to do scene manager.load scene. And we are going to load scene manager dot um, get active scene dot name. Okay, so let me explain this really quickly. What we're doing right now is we're loading the scene, we're loading a scene, we don't know which, this takes in a string parameter. And now we're asking the scene manager again, what scene, what, what scene am I on right now? So basically what happens is whenever we're going to hit that little restart button, that little play again button, it is going to just boot our scene over again. It's going to forget about all the stuff we've done so far and just boot our scene again. Which is um, a good way to simulate a restart. Now, whenever we go to the menu, we're going to just copy and paste this line. But instead of saying this, we're going to say menu. This also works. And we could have simply written up here, we, simply, we could have simply written um, game. And that would have worked. But I just like to do it this way because it doesn't really matter what my scene name is. OK. So now having this, our buttons are still not going to work because they don't know about this function. They don't know that they should be calling this function. And the way you do this in Unity is you are going to click on your button. So right here. And this button has a button component. Now a little bit below every, uh, every of those fields, there is a one, not a one click, a unclick box with a list down here. And whenever you click on that button, everything in that list is being executed. Now we're going to go ahead and just hit the plus sign. And then it asks us for an object. So we're going to drag and drop our def menu in there. And then it's going to list every single component of that def menu. As you can tell, def menu has a rec transform, has a canvas renderer, has an image, and also has a def menu component. If we go back here, Game object, red transform, canvas render, image, and also def menu. Now, def menu is the one that we've created on, on ourself. And we have some public function over there we can call, like restart. And just like this, we actually map this button to the restart function. Let's do the exact same thing for the menu button. So we drag and drop the def menu. We go under def menu, and there is a to menu function. Great. So now whenever we die, we should be able to reload the actual scene, this one. And as you can tell, it works just fine. Now the other one is not going to work because we don't have a menu scene just yet. But that's going to be fixed in the next episode. But right now, before we end this one, I'd actually like to create some kind of um, animation where it goes from alpha to black. Because right now we just get a, a quick... Uh, we, we see everything and then it turns black and I don't really like that so we're gonna fix that by creating some kind of animation up here now what I like to do is go up here in my def menu and declare a, a public image that I call background image now my background image is pretty much the one that is on top of def menu so this one right here and I'm going to get a reference to it. We could simply um, do a get component in this case, but I'll just drag and drop this right here. And right now it takes this spot. Okay, so background image is equal to the uh, black sprite. 
and what we're gonna do now is we are going to code something in the update and I'll go fairly quickly on this one because we've covered that before I'll declare a public bool is shown oh, shown like this is equal to false at first and whenever we toggle this is shown is going to be equal to true now if is not shown that means we were not showing the menu just yet is shown we're not showing the menu just yet so we can go ahead and just return we haven't finished our game just yet so we don't need to take care of that and I'll actually go up here and declare a float as well float transition which is going to be equal to of course 0 to 0 at first and, um, and then in the update if I am showing let's do transition plus equal time dot delta time and I'll say okay so the the background image the image right now that is black dot color is going to equal a lerp in between um, a zero alpha color so new color and I'll just give in the zero 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 so we'll lerp from a color that has nothing on it not even alpha to color dot black which pretty much stands for 0, 0, 0, 1. And then the, uh, the transition float is going to be at the end. So transition right there. Okay, I know that I went a little bit fast, but let's just try this out and hopefully everything works. So I'm going to collide with this. Oh, and we get, we get some kind of flashing issue right there because there is a frame where this is not... Um, Oh, we see we didn't get it this time. And we're actually allowed to move beforehand, so that's something else we need to fix. That's really weird. Okay, let's start by fixing the first issue where we had a... Um, we had the screen going black for a second, and then it went back to uh, zero alpha, and then it went gradually from there. So we're going to take this def menu and just put it on zero alpha this way we don't get the same error again and now as far as our player is concerned why is he allowed to move let's go check out in scripts player motor and if is dead then return and then if time dot time animation duration Okay, so I'm assuming he's not able to move at first. Yep, he's not able to move, but then when we hit something, it reloads the scene, and time dot time is no longer uh, equal to zero. But that's a bug we're going to be fixing in the next episode, guys. So if you enjoyed this, or if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate it. And if you have any comment or question, you can also leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.